Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel for those who've been hanging with me some time and welcome to those of you who are new. I'm Adele Levine, Intuitive and Medium. All right, so I did a little poll, little voters poll on my community page. I stuck with just here on YouTube instead of doing a vote on Instagram because it was pretty clear what you guys wanted. You wanted to know how to trust your intuition. Ta-da! Ta-da or da-da? Ta-da. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, I'm going to um, be drinking from my new mug. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just I just had to do that before we get started. And we're just going to get into it. This is the most common question I get. I mean, it's pretty high up there in the top five. How to trust my intuition meaning people want to know how do you know if you're trusting your own intuition and I get it and I understand because it's the actually the hardest part about not just having an intuition but even contemplating the idea is our intuition speaking to us are we listening to it from inside of us is it coming from somewhere else these are all questions people ask and I think this is the bottom line of why it's really hard to trust. Are we just having our imagination run wild and we're just yanking it from thin air and just winging it, which is what I feel most people think intuition is or what people mix up the idea of intuition versus thought. I'm going to go over this as you may hear the cats because I, they're actually circling me. They're like, circulating me. I feel like I feel like I might be um, uh, like a, a target for them or something. But I'm going to get into how we can trust our intuition. So first of all, it's pretty easy. Your intuition is going to always be the opposite of what you want to do or think you should do or even sometimes have a plan that you must do. So you may have like a plan for the day, let's say you're getting everything ready, you're about to walk out the door, you're going to go meet someone and you have this whole thing planned, meaning like pretty normal, right? You, you have your plan for the day. You checked off the list and you're like, this is what I'm gonna do. And even if you're not a list checker, cause I'm not, but you just have this concept of exactly what you feel the day should go like. And let's just say it's very inconvenient, but there's something telling you to maybe postpone the time, maybe even sometimes reschedule some plans that you had, or maybe just push it back by an hour, push it forward by an hour, and you're just thinking this is really ridiculous because you know it's going to mess up your whole day and your whole plans. And that is intuition. Intuition is usually that little nudge, that little something telling you something that is very inconvenient. At least that's what you're thinking because you have decided this is the way things should go. And the hardest part about following your intuition, sorry, following your intuition, I'm trying to speak too fast, is stopping just like I'm doing now and listening and taking a kind of a little closer look as to why you feel this nudge. Now, it's not gonna always be convenient and it's not gonna be one of those things that you actually even like. That's the thing. It's like the cats. They're fighting with each other or playing with each other. You will be fighting and playing with <laughs> Cut that part of the trick. It's just like the cats you might hear. They're battling with each other. It may be a battle with inside yourself. Um, they've quieted down, but it may get a little loud again. And that is kind of what is a dilemma with intuition. It's the idea that we, well, I should say this, people think the idea of intuition is like this little light bulb that just goes on and ah, you exactly know and have the feeling of what you should do and there's just perfect knowing and you just you know feel confident and you're gonna follow it. 
and that is not really how it works because we're not used to that we're used to the very mundane world this world and we're used to lists and we're used to plans and we're used to goals and we're used to this is what you do on this earth where intuition is coming from kind of another realm in a sense like it's coming from the idea there is no time and space and you're jumping past what is around us what's concrete and you're going i'm going to feel my way through the day now that is kind of what i would like to tell you well not kind of this is what i would suggest to you a little exercise if you will you can write it down whatever you need to do um, but a good way to kind of exercise your intuition is to start your day with i'm going to allow myself to follow what comes to me so the reason why I say that is for two reasons. One, it's good practice. It's like a muscle that you're practicing and trying to strengthen. The other is that confirmation and validation is key. I can't even tell you how important it is because it's very hard for you to trust that intuition if you're not getting the validation and the confirmation afterwards. So it may not always be, like I said, a very dramatic or grand confirmation. It could be very small. So for instance, you could just, like I said, feel like maybe I don't wanna leave at this time or maybe I feel like my plans doesn't feel right and that kind of brings me to the other part it's a feeling i'm telling you guys it's a feeling it's that feeling in the air where you feel like things are just a little bit off and you can't quite pinpoint it but you almost have a dread of like maybe going somewhere or doing something now here is next that is very hard and that is fear because fear is definitely i would say it's like the enemy of intuition because fear is the thing that you think you're listening to most of the time most people get not only their thoughts and thinking oh okay is this just my imagination that i'm following and i'm making it up or is this a fear that i'm giving into because i um, don't want to do this because i'm afraid now here's the difference and i'm going to give you a big way to know the difference and this is going to be on the side of fear and on the side of something positive okay so let's start with positive let's say you're about to make plans or you have plans and you're doing something and you know how it is you're driving there or you're thinking about the day something you're excited about something you're looking forward to and you know you've played the scenario out maybe you're meeting someone for the first time or maybe it's been a long time or it's a job interview or something like this and you kind of play this whole situation out like this, they're gonna say this, they're gonna be like, you're the most perfect person, we love you, and you go through it and you start to feel good, right? So a lot of times people feel like, oh, my intuition tells me this is gonna be good. I feel like it's gonna be a good thing, right? That's sometimes fantasy, and there's a difference between fantasy and intuition. And fantasy you can tell because all of a sudden it starts playing out like, a great movie like a wonderful movie you're watching that is definitely more emotional psychological and what you really want to happen you see so i'm going to give you a little example of my own i one time had to go in um to like court it wasn't like anything crazy it was just like one of those things like a ticket or something like that something silly and i had to stand before a very kind of you know, not like I said, not like a judge judge, but you know what I mean? Like someone who had to kind of roll on, on this thing, on this ticket. And when I was standing there, I, before I went there, so I had this whole fantasy that he was going to say, what do you do? And I was going to tell him and he was going to ask me to read him. And then he was going to like, you know, I really trust you, blah, blah, blah. Definitely fantasy. I had this whole scenario played out. It didn't go like that at all. Went in. It was here you go, pay this, end of story. However, another time, and I wasn't tuning in, I was just kind of being in the flow, and this is definitely not an example of intuition. This is kind of an example of how sometimes maybe you have a feeling that could happen, but now you've played the fantasy out. So for instance, the example that I just gave you was maybe this is a feeling this could happen, but now I've ran away with it and created a whole movie-esque version of life. Now this, the time that I had to seal up this whole thing and 
another, you know, that I had to go in another time and just kind of like, okay, I took care of everything and it's done. He, he did. This was a different judge and he did ask me what I did and he did ask me to read him right there on the spot. And no, it didn't, the movie-esque version did not happen where he's like, whoa, that's great. Now you're just like dismissed. You don't have to pay anything. But he did say I was correct in what I saw and it was a really surreal experience. So my point is, is that there was an intuitive sense with me that this could happen. But of course, it didn't happen in the timing that I thought it would. It happened way later at another time. And it didn't happen in the way that I created the fantasy version, which is, oh my gosh, he's going to think I'm amazing and just open up the red carpet for me. So that is the difference between fantasy and intuition. You can tell because you'll run away with it. But let's say you go, I'm gonna go into this job interview and I have a good feeling. I have a feeling that this is, you know, they are gonna like me and this is gonna go well. I just have a good feeling. That could be your intuition. But if you're going into like, and they're gonna tell me you're hired on the spot and they're gonna throw everybody else out and they don't need to look for anyone further or whatever the case may be, you're gonna fall in love whatever that might be the fantasy and you can feel the difference now let's go over to fear now with fear it's similar with fear you may be you know maybe you're going somewhere maybe you're doing something new for the first time or this job interview and such and now you kind of have this whole vision that you're going okay I'm going to go in this job interview they're going to hate me they're going to tell me to my face they're going to say you're the worst interviewer we've you know interviewee we've ever had or whatever and maybe you just go into this whole thing like you're going to mess it up and you can tell it's fear however if there's something telling you that there's something off about this job you're applying for that you're saying you know I just don't have a good feeling about these people I don't know why I just don't feel like it's going to go well I feel like something's going to be a little off about this and you just listen to that so you're going to brace yourself because then when you're there and you kind of see these red flags you start to know and that's your confirmation and it goes the same with the fantasy part meaning like if things go well and you're going you know I had a good feeling it did go well and that's your confirmation these are subtle ones I understand but they're also pretty big but with the fear one let's say you kind of put yourself on check like you're like okay I'm gonna pay attention because I just don't have a good feeling but I'm gonna do my best and you get there and they're really not what you think or not what you want to be a part of then you realize it wasn't that you were afraid it was just there was something about it that didn't feel right and this is very hard all of them are hard to discern and that's why practice 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 I've been reading for 16 years professionally and every day I'm reading it's, it's like practice now I know you're not doing that but what I'm saying when people ask me like how can I get better at it it's not like a light you just flick on and it all starts to happen it's something you have to get used to it's this muscle you're exercising and you're getting used to more and more and more so take a day and say today I'm gonna to try and follow my intuition and you may go through this back and forth thing oh I think that's fear or I think that's fantasy or I'm scared to trust it and yes you may fumble around through it but you also may get some really cool confirmations and realize that maybe all the time you've been trying to listen to your intuition all those times you said I knew it and I just didn't listen why didn't I listen is the times you were trying to listen to your intuition lastly where does it come from I believe like I say to everyone all the time it's part of a collective whole it's part of all of the people and energies and entities in the other realm and part of us in this realm so it's all interconnected and even the cats so um, it's all so don't so worry so much about it is it inside me or is it here because that comes from ego when you're worried about is it inside me is it from here then you're coming from an ego place and you're wanting to go well I just want to feel like I have some superpower and I'm special rather than really tuning in thank you guys so much 
actually put in the comments below, like I always say, I love to hear comments from you, but let me know what is so hard. What is hard for you when you're following your intuition? What makes it difficult or what makes it challenging? And don't forget to subscribe because if you like these types of videos, which some of you have DM'd me and let me know you have, then when you subscribe, you know when they're gonna pop up again. And I am doing another class that I asked you guys in my last class that you like, and you all said that you wanted me to do manifesting opening the gates and manifesting part two. And you can check all that on my website and follow me on Instagram and all that jazz. So listen to yourself, follow no one, listen to your intuition, listen to that inner self, listen to that inner voice and that piece of us that is connected to the collective whole. And I'll see you guys soon.